My name is Jay. And Dr. Kane. And we are here with another video from Total Health Systems here. And today our topic is tech neck. And perhaps not just the neck in particular, but posture as a whole and what technology is doing to said posture. And, you know, both Dr. Kane and I, we've been doing a little bit of research here. And unfortunately, the research is not great on what technology is doing to our posture, but we're here to tell you some ways to help combat against it. You know, at least inform you of some knowledge so we can walk away from this video with a little bit better understanding of what exactly we're dealing with here. Now, I really feel like uh, there's a lot to be said, that's for sure, but I guess I, perhaps a good place to start is what would you say is like the average screen time that the normal user would do in just a typical day? Yeah, so what I've seen is about, for Americans, somewhere around 11 hours a day that we spend you know, between oh, phones, computers, and TVs, which is a lot, and it's, lot. And it's progressing. It continues to be more and more, so oh. more and more jobs are reliant on it. So it's, uh, yeah, it's only getting worse. Oh, and yeah. Uh, yeah, it's important that we that we understand the implications of this, and, and not just the the technology, but just poor posture as a whole. Because mm -hmm. even when we're not in front of our technology, we're we're forward eating or we're writing or we're looking down to make sure we don't trip over anything. So uh, it's important that we that we're mindful of just the posture as a whole, and mm -hmm. technology as a reason has become the biggest player in, in that game. So uh, so so all other viewers know in terms of the the real serious implications that this poor posture. A lot of it mediated by technology. What, what, what do you feel are some of the, the biggest detriments that, that come from this? Mm. Well, I think, I guess two come to mind right offhand. And one is a very interesting study that's been done that for, uh, for every degree of forward head posture, which forward head posture is more just kind of doing one of those, you know, certainly not the best feeling movement. Even just doing that wasn't great. But for every degree of forward head posture, adds an extra pound of weight to our head and neck. And I mean, our head and neck on average is about 10 to 12 pounds. So, I mean, next time you go bowling, hold that 12 pound bowling ball and think, wow, that's sitting on top of my spine. So for every degree, we're getting 13, 14, 15. And on average, I would say, arguably, we have about, say, three to five degrees, just normal forward head posture. And if you start to look around, it becomes evidently clear that a lot of us might be in some neck pain. That's for sure. And now the second one is actually a research article that one of our chiropractors had showed us here at Total Health System that there is more ossification in the occiput, which is ossification, just more bone formations in the occiput, and that's that kind of sharp bone right in the back of our head. And now there's new bone forming on that bony prominence just from this posture that we're assuming more of looking down at our phones. And so if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense if we're adding in all of this weight by just leaning our head forward, the bone's going to react. I mean, the bone is... Well, it's going to get stronger when it needs to, and oh boy, is it getting stronger and it's needing to. So, not great, but scary and informative at the same time. But what else have you seen so far? Yeah, so not just the, the base of the skull that mm -hmm. experienced that ossification or that those degenerative factors, but it's the entire neck. I mean, when people come in, we take their x-rays, we look at their neck, and, and we'll see that at least 95% of people, their, mm -hmm. their neck, the alignment is kind of straight up and forward when it should be a round forward where the top bone's directly over the bottom bone. That is an extremely aware thing that we see. And the more that people have this, um, this poor posture that's reflected in the x-ray, the more likely that all the bones in their cervical spine and their neck are going to break down over time. So that's, that's a pretty important mm -hmm. thing. Uh, another important thing to, to consider is that it's actually correlated with, with death. That oh, the further forward your head is, like every inch further forward, your likelihood for death goes up. And it makes mm -hmm. sense. When you look at the, the older people that are sure. you know, getting you know, near to the end and their, their posture, they're, you know, that's, that's where they're at. So um, th this is a sign of life and vitality and a healthy mm -hmm. functioning nervous system when, when you have the, this good proper posture. Uh, another thing to, another detriment that comes from this is uh, what's called a Dowager's hump. I'm sure everyone has seen a, at least a couple of these. Oh, it's yeah. when you get that, that kind of fat pad, that in, inflamed ball that's at the base of the neck between the shoulder blades. Mm. Um, yeah, just not, uh, not the most sightly thing, but it uh, unfortunately does, does happen. And the biggest culprit is that forward head posture. Um, and then lastly, last thing I want to touch on is your breathing mechanics. Mm. So when the further forward you slouch forward, the less volume you essentially have to be able to bring air into your lungs. You sit nice and tall, you can breathe more in, you can get that, that air towards the bottom of the lungs where you have more nutrient exchange, meaning you're getting the oxygen in more efficient, uh, efficiently and you're getting the carbon dioxide out more efficiently, which is great because you want to lot, right. lots of oxygen circulating through your body and your brain. <sighs> Absolutely. Exactly. So, so there's a lot of uh, 
a lot of really bad things that, that happen from this, this forward posture, especially over time as this, this compounds. Uh, and again, it's challenging, right? And our, our whole, it's like our whole world, all our technology, is that everything we do, it, it so much requires us to, to be looking down. So let's go and start talking about some of the things that, that we can do to combat these challenges and get ourselves in this upright posture that's going to have us feeling better, it's going to have our brains more oxygenated, and have our spines and our bodies last and longer. So Jay, what, what do you feel are some of the most important things to help people reinstate a, a healthy, mm -hmm. proper posture? See, it's a good question, and I think that's kind of why we're here. That's probably why we clicked on this video in, in general, just to see, well, okay, we know <coughs> what we're up against, but how? How do we combat against it now? And I mean, of course, working in the physical therapy department, I can't help but think of stretches and exercise that we can do, again, to help combat against this. And I mean, we see plenty of patients on a weekly basis that go through this. So some of my favorite exercises that I love to give some of our patients is, well, the exercises, I call them the Y's and the T's. And as you'll see that it's more of the arm position in which that, you know, we get this name. But it's where we'll stand about, maybe say a couple inches away from a wall. We're gonna keep our head and neck nice and straight facing said wall bring our arms up overhead, and we're just going to slowly alternate bringing our arms back, maybe about, say, a foot away from the wall. Nothing too crazy, maybe a little bit of rotation in the back there, but we don't want so much rotation that we're opening up our chest a lot, you know, and we're feeling a little bit of pinch maybe in the low back. Certainly, I mean, your body will tell you if we've gone too far. And this is more to isolate, say, posterior deltoids, you know, lower trapezius, again, more of the muscles that are going to kind of bring our shoulders back. So again, combating against that, roll forward. And then the other one is the T's. And again, just from the other, you know, other description there, I mean, you'll notice that it's just the arm position. Now we're kind of bringing our shoulders about shoulder height, and same thing, kind of facing the wall, bringing our arms back ever so slightly, maybe about, this time you can go a little bit further, maybe a foot and a half to two feet, but again, not so much so where we're rotating all the way from our lower body, but just trying to isolate these more muscles in between the shoulder blades called the rhomboids. That's where you should kind of feel that burn there. But it's a good burn. That's where we live here is in the burn. So of course, if we do everything of strengthening the back and not do anything about stretching the front, it's not that the exercises are going to be useless, but we're really not doing everything we can to help combat against this pain. So really, I mean, the stretch that I love to give patients to is more of a doorway stretch of just kind of taking your forearms, putting them right in between a door jam, lunging forward, making sure that we're at least putting one foot in front of the other, because if we keep them together and we bring, lean forward, it kind of pinches the back a little bit too much. So I love just giving more of a lunge. And all of a sudden, the more you lunge, boy, look out, oh, does it just stretch out the front in a good way, of course. And now if I guess, you know, both Dr. K and I were a little bit taller, we got a little bit wider wingspan, so it's easy to find a door and just kind of pin and stretch. But say if we're a little bit shorter, we don't have that large wingspan, we can say find a corner. And it's the same thing. I mean, we do more of like we call the 90-90 position, 90 degrees at the shoulder, 90 degrees at the elbow. Again, just having it about shoulder height, you just kind of dealer's choice, picking which leg you want forward. And then you just slowly lunge into that corner, and again, should feel it way more in the chest, shouldn't feel too much, you know, pinching in the back or anything like that. It should just be a really great stretch. Obviously, holding these for about 30 seconds a piece <clears throat> should really do you pretty well, at least for opening up the front, strengthening the back to get that pain out of here. But that, of course, is the physical therapy side. I guess, what do you do chiropractically with your patients? Sure. So most of the time, people come in, they've got their poor posture, they've been doing it for years, and we'll find out that, lo and behold, yes, the joints are stuck, they've locked up, they've adapted to this to this poor posture. So we do the adjustments, we get the joints mobilized, and after, especially after a handful of times doing that, things are moving better, then right there, I say, go to jail. <laughs> Go to Jay across the hall because if you don't retrain the muscular system, the joints aren't going to hold. They're not going to maintain that motion or that alignment. So it's extremely important to, to adjust it for both angles, the joints and the muscular system, to hold it in place and maintain that, that proper motion. Um, but also something that's real important that, that both of us will talk about with patients is the ergonomics, right? Mm -hmm. Because if they, if you do your stretches and exercises for you know 15, 30 minutes a day and you get adjusted, but then you go right back to the computer and right back here and you spend 10 hours here doing this, it's it's, it's not going to be that, that effective. Right. So you do need to address it from that angle as well. And um, what, what do you feel are some of the most important things from an ergonomical standpoint mm -hmm. to, to help people bring that, that proper posture back? So there's, a, again, a couple things that come to mind, at least that are very general catch-alls that I think a lot of us can incorporate in our daily lives. And say for the computer, for instance, normally if we have, say, our keyboard that's a little bit too far, we tend to reach a little bit too far forward. So now we're reaching, it brings those upper trapezius, we're kind of wearing the shoulders as earrings, not in style this year, and it will never be in style. So let's keep those shoulders down nice and low, and bringing that keyboard as close as you can, it keeps those shoulders back nice and straight. And then, of course, I think about, you know, 
I mean, if we, a lot of us don't probably have a chair at work that is conducive for a good posture. So honestly, if I'm, if we're able to, I don't really use the backrest too much if I don't have to. I'm trying to keep a nice erect spine, keeping the shoulders back, because then if I do have a chair that has maybe not the best ergonomical lumbar support, I just really lean into that support and, well, that immediately changes the game when it comes to the posture. So sitting up as straight as we can, bringing that keyboard as close as we can to at least our chest to keep those shoulders back is a great start. But I guess what else would you recommend? Absolutely. So in terms of that, that low back support, uh, sometimes it's more just a, a psychological thing, just mm. switching it up, something that, that reminds the person, yes, I, I need to keep this, this good posture. So right. if you do something different, like I recommend people get in a small hand pillow, put it in the small of the back, especially mm in cars because the, oh, the seats in cars I think are just designed terribly but so you get that in, in the car and work or whatever and not only does it help reinstate that that proper alignment in the low back which helps with the upper as well but just that reminder you have something different that's constantly nudging you saying yes this posture is important mm -hmm. make sure you continue to maintain proper posture uh, also keeping the monitor whatever you're looking at at eye level mm -hmm. is really important and then thirdly and then lastly might sound a little bit cheesy, but I'm going to go with it anyways because I know it's helped me out, is if you just adopt the mindset of, of leading with the heart. This is the energy that, that you want to, to project out to the world. This is what you want people to feel from you, uh, at least initially. And so, so walking around with that in mind, that this, this comes first, that keep the head back instead of you know, leading with the ego and the mind or whatever's oh, there, yeah. but you keep that back and, and let it uh, lead, lead with, uh, with this part here, which... Uh, I think most time is a, is a great, beautiful thing to do, but there are some times where it could potentially get you into a little bit of trouble um, because uh, as, uh, as, as guys, you know, sometimes there's other, other alpha men out there that, oh, wanna, uh, that might in interpret it as a, you know, some in, in a not so great way, and, and women as well, if, uh, especially if you've got you know, a large chest and they're putting that out there for the world, it can you know, sometimes uh, attract not the, not the greatest of, uh, of attention that, some, that people are looking for. So. What, what do you feel are some of the ways that people might want to address some of these sociological challenges mm -hmm. and, and keeping a really good posture? You know, it's a great question. We could probably make a whole video on just that <laughs> aspect alone of how to combat the sociological aspect of proper posture. But really of just knowing that, say, if we are, you know, a woman that has a large chest, realizing that, well, you're making the decision not to be in pain anymore. And if you start to get a little bit catty and they're like, well, why are you showing off what you got? You know, it's... It's more just describing, it's like, hey, listen, I have a lot of, you know, middle back pain, I have a lot of neck pain, I'm sick of it, and I'm doing something about it, you know? So once we can empower the masses with the knowledge of, hey, we're in pain, and this is what I'm doing to get out of said pain, then it starts to change the game. It's not that I'm showing off, it's that I'm making a decision for myself to be better. And that's really, that's the key when we're talking about posture is making the decision to change our lifestyle, you know? And, of course, even if we think about, I mean, simple uses of just, you know, instead of taking our phone and bringing it down just to our, you know, just all the way, I mean, pretty much bringing it chin to chest, bringing it up, you know, it just kind of, ah, just again, leading with the heart, making sure that we're open, you know, we're open to these new ideas, because sometimes it's not going to be the easiest, we're talking about fighting gravity here, but I think with these slow incremental changes, we can really get on track to a pain-free lifestyle. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And if you do <clears throat> break the... the perfect posture to come down for, for a little bit to if it's going to help you avoid a fight with another guy because I mean honestly I've, I've felt that sometimes yeah, where it's just like uh, okay like, like <laughs> you can be the alpha like I just I don't want to I don't want to fight it's okay oh, gosh. Um, yeah. so it's, it's but as long as the, the majority of your life you spend in this proper posture that, that's what really matters if you, you know, we all got to bend forward to tie your shoes and we all got to you know break that uh, that posture at times but the, the majority of your time if you keep it in here there's going to be so many wonderful wonderful benefits that that come back to you in the short term and in the long run and, and we want that for all of you so absolutely um any anything else for for this video here jay well we definitely i mean we talked about a lot of research here today so we will i mean we'll be sure to put that in the description too just so we can give you some links so if you're more like-minded like us and you really want to delve into the research aspect We'll be sure to provide that for you as well. And of course, any comments, concerns that you have, please be sure to leave those down below because we would love to get more ideas of just how to bring as much knowledge and empowerment that we can to you guys. Yep. All right. Wonderful. Thank you all for watching and looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Take care. Nice. Oh, that was pretty solid. That was better. Yep. That was a good one. <laughs>